When I first set out to get on the road over three years ago, my biggest question was how much is this all going to cost me? And at the time, there wasn't a lot of great information or month-to-month -month expenses being posted online for me to base it off of. And so today, I'm going to be covering every single penny that I spent in the last month. Now this is not cherry picked, this was completely random. As you'll see, I did have some unexpected expenses. And so just take this with a grain of salt. I'll try to explain everything the best that I can. So hopefully you can take these numbers and apply them to your own life to get a sense of what it might cost you. To make this simple, I broke today down into four categories. We have truck stuff, my stuff, variables, and miscellaneous. And I'm gonna break down what each of those mean and all of the expenses that were included therein. So starting out with truck stuff, true to form, my biggest expense of the month was gas. Now I'm not gonna lie, this was actually a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. There are certainly months where I spend far more than this and honestly, I'd probably say that that has been the norm. But recently I have started to travel a little bit slower and that's definitely reflected in the amount that I spent last month. Which speaking of, I spent $200 $189.94. Now this included part of my drive from California to Colorado and then gas around the state. Obviously this is going to vary heavily depending on where you're located in the country. I'm sure if I looked the month prior when I was coming up the Baja Peninsula and into California, I probably spent double this, easy. But this month was a little bit better. Next up is truck maintenance, which again varies from season to season and how much I'm driving. I did not get my oil change last month. That actually just happened a couple of days ago, but I did end up topping up my coolant and I also replaced my windshield wipers amongst a couple of other small things for the cab of the truck when I first got to Colorado and this category cost me $113.51. Again, this really varies. Months that I get my oil change, for example, I'm using full synthetic, oftentimes high mileage, and that can cost anywhere from $150 to $180 plus if I'm paying to have it done. Obviously, it's cheaper if you do it yourself, but just something to consider, especially if you're in an older vehicle, you will have to do that more often to maintain the structural integrity and the mechanical integrity of your rig. And finally, my least favorite category for truck stuff, other than, I guess, breakdowns, repairs, and tows. So maybe not that bad after after all. And last month between insurance on the truck and then I actually also included the renter's insurance that I pay on the contents of everything I have in the camper cost $105.05. One thing to note here is that coverage actually only covers the truck. If I'm in an accident, I have coverage that would cover the value of the damage done to another person, let's say, but the camper actually has not been covered as it should be, which is such a big no-no. Do not do what I have done here, but it has been really difficult to find reasonable insurance that includes both the truck and the camper. So I would recommend if you're looking to get into this market, maybe buy a truck camper of your own, to look at truck insurance or truck and camper insurance before you purchase, just to make sure that you're able to cover it at the level that you'd like. Next up, let's talk my stuff. And this is broad for a reason. It includes all of my fixed bills, as well as some of my variable spend like Tara's expenses. And the first thing that we're gonna cover here is my health insurance, which is through the state of Oregon. Right now I'm paying $37.35 per month. That includes both dental and medical insurance. And something to consider here if you're looking into insurance to have on the road is to get something that affords you at least basic or like emergency coverage outside of your home state. A lot of times you'll get an insurance plan that looks really great on paper, but as someone who is maybe traveling a lot or living nomadically, it might not actually cover you in the states that you're visiting away from home. So something to be aware of and to think about. But before I share about the most unexpected and expensive expenses of the month, let's talk about something that didn't break the bank. All thanks to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Now, as some of you may have heard, I'm in the process of making some major life changes. And while I'm really excited about them, it doesn't make pivoting or change in general any less scary. And while I do have friends and family in my life, gratefully, who I'm able to bring these issues to, to talk them out and get advice, sometimes it's nice to have someone who's completely separate from the situation to provide unbiased professional advice which is where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp is an online service that connects you to a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. In case, like me, you've decided to change your living situation, your location, your community, and your work, all within the span of about a week. Which, come to think of it, maybe I should talk to my therapist about these slightly impulsive decisions. <laughs> 
And getting started is simple. To connect with a therapist, you can use my link, betterhelp.com forward slash SheRoamsWild to answer a few short questions about yourself and get connected with a professional therapist. From there, BetterHelp will typically match you with your therapist within 48 hours, where you can then begin therapy from the comfort of your home, your rig, your phone, your computer, your tablet, or wherever else you have strong internet connection. So whether you're looking for more support in a current phase of life, or you'd like to address more acute feelings or situations, let BetterHelp connect you to a therapist that can help you. Visit betterhelp.com forward slash SheRoamsWild or choose She Roams Wild from the drop down menu on their website at sign up to enjoy 10% off your first month of therapy. And thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. All right, let's get back into all the other money that I did spend this month. So I'm sure you're all wondering, what the heck did you spend so much money on last month? We heard that you had this big bill and that would be Tara's health, which I've hinted at, I think in YouTube videos, I've also mentioned over on Instagram and my other social media, is that Tara has unfortunately been really struggling with her health over the last couple of months. And so we did have some unexpected bills taking her to a vet hospital and just all the testing that that comes with. Now I am fighting this bill with the insurance company. As you'll hear, I do pay for her pet insurance every month. So a lot of this should be covered, but as of right now, I spent $609.42 on Tara and her healthcare last month. This does include over $400 in vet bills, which again, I will be going to the insurance company with those bills, trying to argue that they are covered. But as of right now, all that money is not in my bank account. <laughs> this also includes things like toys, chew sticks, her food, and some add-ins. Um, something that I didn't really account for though, you'll hear in a minute my grocery bill for the month and I will say that I do purchase a lot of food that is kind of shared between us so some of that grocery bill is also going to be I guess tacked on to this $600 um, I just don't know exactly how much getting into more of the fixed bills last month I paid $175 for my internet and my phone plan I know that that sounds insane and it kind of is I think it's wild that we're still paying this much for phone and internet but it is actually much better than it was back in December and January before I got Starlink and dropped my phone plan down with Visible. Part of that was financial, part of it was just that I truly did not need as big of a plan or a second hotspot uh, once I had Starlink. And so far, I will say that I've been extremely impressed by the Starlink service. It does pull power, as you know, but I have Blue Eddy for that. And I think that the Visible service has been working really well. I do have two or five gigs per day of unlimited hotspot with them. So when I'm in town, I don't have to set up my Starlink. And then for times when we're off grid, you guys know the drill. I set up my Starlink, I set up the Blue Eddy, and we have internet around the clock. So some of these have been subscriptions, I guess you could say, but the more subscription heavy category we're talking Spotify and Hulu. I have an Adobe Premiere subscription that I pay for every month. I also have my gym subscription, those sorts of things. Ended up costing me $97.44. And generally speaking, I think that's okay. To be under $100 feels pretty good to me. Um, it depends, I guess, how you categorize subscriptions. If you lump Starlink in there with it, then we're definitely over that amount. But generally speaking, I use all of these services every day or every week when it comes to something like my gym membership for showers. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, the next two are a little bit more variable. That is showers and laundry. They probably should have actually been included in the variable category, but for some reason I put them here with kind of just necessities. Uh, I did spend $10 on showers last month and those were in hostels. It's not something that I normally do, but because Planet Fitness wasn't around and it was cold as freaking heck, I did take a shower outside, as you'll see here, I'll insert a video, when I was in Colorado, but um, definitely not my preference when it's below freezing and snowing. And laundry last month cost $17.50. I typically do it once or twice a month. This month I only did it once because, again, I was able to stop at a friend's house. They let me do laundry at their house, which was such a freaking blessing. All of which brings us to the last category, well, the last two categories, I guess, but one is kind of just snuck in there at the end, and that is variables and miscellaneous. And these two are kind of interchangeable depending on what I'm doing and what I'm spending month to month. But the first thing in variables, all of us have to pay for food. This month was no exception, and I spent 
an egregious $692.94. Before you click off or leave a nasty comment about how I need to learn how to buy groceries, please hear me out. This included a friend's birthday. This included a backcountry mountain ski adventure where I bought a bunch of charcuterie, so cheeses, jams, meats, things I don't really buy for myself. And it also included some time spent in San Diego and the Eastern Sierra. And if you guys have been to either of those places, you know groceries are very expensive. On the topic of food, next up is eating out. And this is not something that I do a lot. I have tried more and more to get out to cafes, small bakeries, and to make little purchases in towns that I'm staying in just to give back to the local communities and also slow down and enjoy it a little bit more. Um, but all of this ended up costing me $94.86 last month, which again, not too bad. And to wrap up variable expenses, this one pains me to say, but you know what? In hindsight, it was paired with some of the most amazing winter memories that I think I have, and that would be my fun spend. Part of this is an Airbnb that I got with Tara when she wasn't feeling well. That was about $300 for four days doesn't feel that terrible, although it was expensive overall. And the other $400 in change actually went to a day out on the mountain with my friends out at Vail. So this was ski and snowboard rentals. I also didn't have goggles with me or a helmet, so I had to rent the helmet and buy goggles because I don't rent goggles, unfortunately. This included $40 in parking, which is a crime if you ask me, and my discounted, if you'll believe it, lift ticket. Oh, and here I am justifying it, but I don't think I actually said the number. In fun spending, I spent $794.80, which I believe that is the most expensive category was fun. And it literally comprised of one day and a couple of days in an Airbnb. Just goes to show how quickly money can go if you're not careful. <laughs> but thankfully we're almost done. The last category here is miscellaneous and I actually only have one amount here and that is $155.86. Miscellaneous this month was made up of, I'm looking, a print shop order. I had to print out a organizer for my taxes, which I unfortunately just had to pay a couple of days ago. I also took my bike into the mechanic to get it tuned up so I could go riding when we were out in Fruta and Grand Junction, and a couple of other, you know, convenience store purchases here and there that I couldn't quite fit well into another category. All of these amounts, all of these experiences, all of this money spent comes to a grand total of $3,194.12, which I am cringing, my eyes are squinting. It does not feel good to say that number, but I also look back on the month and I know that I took care of Tara, I got an unexpected Airbnb, and I made amazing memories with friends at a birthday over food on the ski hill that I wouldn't have gotten to experience if I had been so tight about my budget that I didn't allow myself to go and, I guess, spend the money and indulge a little bit. But I think the big categories to focus on here, if you are someone who is also getting on the road, they're gonna be those earlier categories, things like figuring out your internet, figuring out your insurance, getting an address on the roads, so that way you can pay your bills and get coverage. That is where I think you can make the most difference month to month outside of things like groceries and gas and how fast you travel. So if you're looking to get out on the road yourself, obviously this is not law. This is just a number. This is one cherry picked example of how much money I spent in a month long period. And I hope that it gives you a better sense for what you might be able to spend or save as well. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video and for making therapy more accessible and affordable to everyone. And I will see you all next Sunday. Bye.